All right, what I'm going to do now is I want to show you how just how sturdy this thing is now that I got the new braces set up on it. And then I'm going to pull the camera off and do the walk around and let you see it up close. Okay, so here we go. There you go. It's nice and sturdy. I'm going to pull the camera off here and um, give you a couple close-ups. After that, I'm going to pause out. Then I'm going to disassemble one of these pipes here and give you the exact measurements of how to cut everything. Followed up with me actually doing some cuts on this pipe and showing you how to heat it up properly so that you can make parts that aren't made to work together, marry together perfect. All right. What I did is I made some braces. I used uh, one and a quarter inch T connectors. You gotta make two of them, this one here, one down at the bottom. And I used, uh, I think it's four and a half, five inch pipe clamps to go around these. And I took a hacksaw and came back a quarter of an inch or something. And I sliced back on those so that I could uh, take this and thread it through it. But just to make it uh, pretty quick, uh, I think two and a three quarters, two and a three quarters cut, six inches cut for the pipe right here. And I glued everything in, made sure everything's good, secure. Now, I'll do a, another sniggle of the video just showing that brace so that it's absolutely clear to you. But there it is. It's nice and sturdy. This is the way that I envisioned it. I didn't know how I was going to brace this thing up. And so I had to sit back and think about it a while before I just attempted to build it. But to me, that was the best way to do it. And it absolutely works perfect. So on that note, I'm going to pause out. And I'm going to remove one of these pipes, and we're going to look at it and see exactly how I built it so that it's absolutely clear to you, including giving you the proper lengths to cut all these pipes here to make this marry up, where to do the measurements, how to set everything up so that when you build it, that you'll have what I've got here, and it'll be right, okay? So let's pause. All right, everybody, I want to show you what the support braces look like after they were removed from the filter system. And for most of you guys out there, this is pretty much self-explanatory. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the exact measurements so that you can do this and not be guessing what you need to cut. Okay, so first I'm going to zoom in. As you can see, we've got a T-connector. Everything is one and one quarter inch PVC pipe. Okay, so you're going to need two T-connectors since you're going to be building up two of these things. Now, use Schedule 40 PVC pipe, the thick wall stuff. Do not use the thin wall stuff because you are going to be taking a hacksaw and cutting slits on the sides of these things so that you can fish these giant pipe clamps through it, okay? And um, trust me, I thought of a lot of ways of doing this, and this was absolutely the best way of doing it. These guys here, I think, were five, five and a half inches, something like that. I'm not sure exactly, but you get them for like two bucks a piece from Lowe's, and um, I'm sure any other hardware store carries them. You'll need a total of six of those guys, and what you're going to do is you're going to cut this piece right here, exactly six inches in length. Cut these two here, two and three-fourths inches in length. Glue everything, shove it together, then take a hacksaw. And I'm going to zoom in, hope this camera will not blur out on me. Take a hacksaw and cut slices on the sides of the pipe. Come up one-fourth of an inch. That's all I need to come back, okay? Do it on both sides, mirror it. Do this on all three pieces of pipe or all six pieces once you do both braces. Then you're just going to be able to take these guys here because the beauty of these are they're a tad bit thinner than a hacksaw blade. You'll be able to fish them right through. And, of course, you've already seen how I had them set up, so that's not rocket science there. But I'm going to tell you right now, this was the, the absolute best way to do it. Everything is rock stable, and um, it should last for a long, long time. So there you go. Okay, for starters, everybody, these things are about five feet and give or take a few inches. Well, actually, add a few inches to that. I'm going to zoom in down here and hopefully you'll see the tape measure, be able to read it. Zoom back out. I'm just going to walk the length of it here for you and let you see it. And um, just kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at here with one of these actually removed from the system. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause out. I'm going to pull this apart. We're going to go over each piece of it. And you'll have the measurements of it and all that good stuff. And um, 
You'll also have the exact part numbers, what to go get, if you go get this from Lowe's. So there you go. On that note, let's pause out. All right, what we're looking at here is one of the three tubes from the tri-filter system. I've got it disassembled and I've got it laid out in an exploded view format. This way you can see exactly how it goes together. Plus you're going to see things that you would not see when the thing is actually put together. So you can see now how many sections it's in. Minus the bottom, I left the end cap on the bottom part down here on the water reservoir. There was no need pulling that off. Okay, let's start with the top of this thing, the very top of it. Get this out of the way. I'm first going to let you look at it, and then I'm going to explain what you're looking at, which for most of you guys out there, it's self-explanatory. First of all, I am using 4-inch diameter pipe. This is just the uh, irrigation pipe, so it's really thin. It's not made for pressures. You know, something like you may run underground for a gutter system, take the water and run it out somewhere or whatnot. And, of course, that's an end cap. What I did is I used a hole saw on a drill, and I drilled a hole dead center of it. And I'm using one and a fourth inch PVC pipe fittings because that's what I went with for my system. Now, this top piece here is called a slipping thread. I've actually got one if I can find it. Here it is. The reason they call it a slipping thread is not because you're going to slip on it like a banana peel, but um, you got a standard coupler end on it where you slide the pipe in on the other side is threaded. So what I did was I used a hole saw and I drilled a hole in this thing dead center and um, screwed this into it. But there's more to it than that. And I'm going to tell you why. If you got these uh, hole saws like this, they don't make bastardized sizes. Either it's going to be just a smidget too big or a smidge too small. And um, naturally I went with the smaller one and I'm going to discuss and I'm actually going to demonstrate on a video here how to heat this up properly with a propane torch without killing yourself with carcinogens and how to soften the plastic up just right so you can actually screw this in and then once you screw it in you let it harden. It takes about five or ten seconds and those parts marry up like they were made for each other in a factory and I'm not joking. So that's the first piece, okay? That's the way we couple the gas either to and from the next pipe or wherever it's going to go. Now, the next thing is the actual tube that's going to hold your filter medium. Notice there's black rings on the end of them. I'm going to explain what that is, then we're going to cover the measurement on this. This ain't nothing but plain old electrical tape, vinyl electrical tape. What I did was I took a cap like this and I put it on there. Okay, once the cap was on there, I took a felt tip marker and I sat there and spun it and drew a line all the way around it. Then I pulled the cap off. Now, before I did any of that, I need to say right now that I cleaned this. You can clean it with denatured alcohol, acetone, or pipe cleaner, or whatever you have on hand, but you just got to make sure that you want your stuff clean because once you put that tape on it, it will really stick and do a really good job of making a seal that can be used over and over again as you pull these pieces apart to change out medium. So what I did after I cleaned it and I drew the line on it, I took electrical tape and I pulled me off a big old strip of it. I didn't cut it, but um, you don't want to pull it tight or you don't want to be loose. You just lay it on your line and you gently walk it around, pull some more tape out, gently walk it around. You can see this is absolutely on here, absolutely straight, okay? And once I got over here, this is the scene, I folded it over and then I took a razor and just gently cut into it and what I wound up with was a piece of tape where I cut it at the seam where they folded together and they married up perfect. That allows this guy to be able to slide on it and make a damn close to airtight seal. Good enough for whatever you need to, to not have um, oxygen being tugged in the system. It's too loose without the tape. The tape still keeps it loose but Keep in mind, you're, you're dealing with low vacuum pressures on this thing, and that tape, for all practical purposes, is an airtight seal. Hell, I actually hooked these things up to the vacuum cleaner and walked around them with a piece of paper burning with smoke, and um, there was nothing tugging into them. But you don't have to get that critical with it. I did. I was just curious. Now, with that said, we're going to get a measurement on this thing, and um, I'm going to tell you how how you know how long of the piece of pipe that I used. You can change this a little bit if you want to. 
Now, we're gonna start here. I didn't want to waste pipe, so I probably got an oddball measurement down here. I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Okay, I'm sitting here at uh, 45 and 3 fourths inches for all practical purposes, give or take a little bit. It's not rocket science, it's not perfect. But all three of them are cut exactly the same length. Now you notice on this tube here that I made the I made the black tape sealing places on both sides, both ends of it. Now let's look at the coupler. Inside of this coupler, I got some of that quarter inch screen, this other words a quarter inch squares. Zoom in on that for you. I cut the screen out so that it fit right in here. I had to slide it in there. This guy here will slide onto the pipe. And once he hits that pipe, that screen is in there. It's not coming out. It'll be held in place by the, the lip of the pipe mashing up against the lip of the coupler in here. Okay, and now what you have is a screen so all your filter material doesn't fall out and go into your water reservoir, which is right here. Also, I need to say something here too. This has also got black tape underneath it. You just can't see it because it's like right behind the lip on there, but trust me, it's in there. And um, I don't use it on here. Don't need it, and I'm going to tell you why. You want to be able to pull this thing apart when you're draining the water out of it. Plus, if you notice, got some little black uh, liquid stuff there. The tar will self-seal on this thing. At the same time, it'll still pull apart very easy. And this is the water reservoir, okay? So what happens is any gas is coming up, it's going up, and it goes to that screen. Any drip-off will go down to the bottom. And um, that's a, that holds quite a bit of water right there. Now this piece here... I'm going to go back and get the tape measure. I'm going to give you a measurement on this. So hold on. In reality, this piece here is about, um, I actually cut it right at 11 and a half inches. That's what it wound up being. And then, of course, the end cap slides on it. You know, it may add like um, an eighth of an inch because, you know, the thickness of this here. But that's all I did. Now, on here, the same thing. You know, my whole saw either was going to be too big or too small, so what I did, oh, by the way, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with inch and a half pipe or whatever, you'll find that your saw blades you're going to get are going to be non-standard for trying to cut into this. So what I did with this, too, I cut a hole in here, and um, I gently went around with a torch at a very low flame, and, this, and I moved about this fast right here with it. And I'd do it for about 10 or 15 seconds, and I'd stop, and I'd feel it. And as soon as that plastic got just the uh, pliable enough, you don't want it too pliable, but you don't want it where it's too stiff, then I took this guy here, and I literally screwed him in there, let it cool down, unscrewed it, and literally, I mean, it made absolute threads on this thing, okay? And then, of course, you put pipe glue on this thing and screw it in. It's permanent. It's, it's airtight, you know, no doubt about it. So that's the story of how this thing is constructed. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a piece of scrap pipe and I'm going to show you how to burn and heat this thing up properly so that you don't release a bunch of carcinogens because this stuff catches on fire or smokes. Um, it's not good, okay? And, but you can heat it up gently and not create any smokes or fire or anything like that and you'll wind up with something that's, that almost, you, you get bastardized parts to look like they were made factory with each other, okay? Now, something else I want to cover on you here with this. Um, let's see here. You see that I've got the coupling here so that it, I've got like maybe a quarter of an inch or so. I'm taking a guess, almost a half an inch before it touches this guy right here. Um, let's do the best, do this away where you can figure out how far down to come and drill the hole. Okay, I'm going to give you a, this is going to be a rough estimation here. I'm just going by the center of this. It wound up being um, almost, uh, it's like a, almost a little three and a quarter of inches that I came down. You can even go three and a half inches. It really doesn't matter. You know, uh, that's probably good. Come down about three and a half inches for the hole or whatnot. This way you don't, you know, you don't want this guy here bottoming out with him right here. You want to keep everything where you've got that room, as you can see right here. Let me get the camera to focus. Now. I'm going to pause out, and I'm going to show you some other cool tricks about working with this pipe, and I'm going to show you how to burn it once you get the hole drilled into it. I'm also going to show you how to cut absolutely perfectly textbook round cuts that look like they come off the machine. Because if any of you guys out there have ever cut with uh, just taking a plain old hacksaw and cut pipe, you, I don't care how good you think you are on it, you wind up 
with that. And I'm going to show you how to wind up with that. Okay, that's this thing is absolutely level. What you're seeing is that the fluff of where I cut it. And um, there is a trick to it. And I'll tell you right now, it works perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause out and I'm going to come back. All right, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how to get an absolute perfect cut on this stuff, okay? And there's a trick to it. Trust me, it actually works. Now, I took a piece of notebook paper. You know, notebook paper is always going to be absolutely flat on one side of it once you pull it out, you know. What I did is I took a piece of notebook paper out of the printer. I cut it in half. I just folded it in half and uh, tore it at the seam. You can see the seam here, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, and the camera makes sure it's in there. It's rough because I just folded it in half. And, of course, you got your perfectly flat edge on this thing. And all I did is line flat edges up so they were flush with each other. Use some clear tape on it. Now, this is a gauge right here. Now, say I took a tape measure, and let's say I wanted to come down, I don't know, let's say six inches. I would go over here, put a line on it. I do it in two or three places, probably three ways all the way around, like this. And try to be critical with it so that you know it's absolutely six inches. Take a piece of paper, use the factory cut side. I stepped on this with my foot so it's a little bit off. You take it, you wrap it around. Do this with Tiny Pipe too, it works killer. Now, I'm gonna take that paper and I'm gonna make sure that it's flush, that this part here is absolutely flush with this. Once you do that, then you can slide it and you go around. If you notice on this pipe here, I'm absolutely on the money. I, I don't know if the camera's picking this up. I'm absolutely on the money with this, where it's supposed to be. Then you take your marker, and you gently go around this, and you draw a line on it. And um, I'm just going to draw a partial line. Let's see this. This marker here is about had it. It's about out of gas. But you go around it. Okay, yeah, it's out of gas. But you go around it with a, with a felt, fine felt tip marker, not a big one. You draw a line around it, okay? And you'll, you'll wind up that line will perfectly meet itself on the other side, especially if you've got a good piece of paper and you take time to do it right. Then all you have to do, and I've got a couple of bricks that I put one on. I sit there and I cut on the line. I don't cut to the left or the right of it. I cut on the line. I'll sit there and do this and cut into it, roll it a little bit, just and keep doing that like you see how I'm rotating it. Just four or five little strokes. You don't want to go all the way through the pipe. You just do it like this. What you wind up, you wind up scoring the pipe. Okay? And you will wind up with a cut that will be within a sixteenth of an inch of accuracy. Trust me. You do this all the way around it. And then you can actually spin the pipe. Once you got that score line, it's like a, uh, for some of you old enough to remember this, and for you young pups out there, there used to be a plastic thing called a record. And it had a, this arm that swung over and a needle touched on it and it rode in the groove, but well, that's what you're doing with this. It will ride in the groove. You can actually sit there and go, Shh, and not even put a lot of pressure on it. Within four or five strokes, it'll just fall off, and it'll look like it came from the factory. The cut will be absolute. And um, the reason you want to do that, you want to, this allows you to keep everything uniform when you're putting it together, okay? This way you don't wind up with one that's a quarter of an inch taller, because if you cut, like that piece of pipe I showed you, and you're off, and you do that twice, if you're off... Uh, uh, eighth of an inch two or three times. Well, next thing you know, you're, you're up to three-fourths of an inch out of kilter. I joke you not. So that's the way you cut the pipe. Now I'm going to get to some real stuff. I'm going to pause out here for you. And what I'm going to show you now, and you're going to see me actually do this. I'm going to go get a piece of scrap pipe. I'm going to drill a hole, and we're going to heat it up and burn a hole into it, burn it around it, and show you how to thread a piece of uh, something that's not made to go into something to make it where it looks like it's factory. So on that note, people, I am pausing. The first thing you're going to do is, is drill you a pilot hole. And this is an old, old piece of pipe. You can see it's cracked, it's falling apart. This stuff's about six years old. I didn't want to waste a good piece of my newer stuff. So I'm just going to take a hole and put in it. That's a pilot hole. And now I'm going to take this guy here. And we're going to cut a hole out of this thing. Let's see if this is going to be in the camera so you can see it. Let's make sure you guys see everything going on here. All right. Now, this thing's going to want to grab and pull down, so you got to be careful when you're doing it. Go easy. See what I'm talking about? So if I have to, 
I'll pull back and get it. I don't because I don't want it gouging in. Now I'm going to go back into it, and I'm going to cut it. Even I'm going to barely push it on there. I, I don't want this thing to be gouged into it. So I'm going to take it. Notice I'm rotating it like this. Clean cut. Going back to what I was telling you, that is not going to screw in there, obviously. And had I used this guy right here, it would have been, you'd, you'd never got a seal on it. You'd have put a pound of glue on this thing and had to use epoxy and everything else. Just didn't want to do that. So, now I'm going to pull this up some so you can see what I'm going to do here with the torch. I've got a torch. And, um... You don't want to put a big flame on this. Alright, that's a big flame. I'm going to turn this flame down so low that it's probably coming out of there. Um, as far as the, um, the fuel itself goes, it's coming out of there, I don't know, maybe a, a half inch, quarter of an inch. You know, there's some clear flame on top of it you don't see. But, this is what you're going to do. Take your torch, tip it down. Have your coupling so it's in hand so you can get to it real quick. You're going to do this number right here. Stay as uniform as you can. You want to heat it up right where you drill the hole, right on the edge of it. I'm going to feel it. Still not ready yet. I'm going to slow down just a little bit. You got to take your time. You don't want to do it fast or run a hot flame so you can hurry up and get there with it. What you're looking for is to get this plastic where it's pliable. It's almost there. Notice I was reaching over my finger and touching it. Notice how quick I was doing it because stuff will cool off pretty quick. So, it's almost there. Okay, just about there. I'll pull this guy off. I'm going to take him and push him down a little bit, and I'm going to screw him in. And be mindful that you keep everything aligned and keep it straight. You can see that it's grabbing, and now it's to let it cool for a second, okay? And um, once this thing cools, which takes about every bit of about 20 seconds. The good thing is that plastic will retract a little bit, and you'll actually make threads on this thing. You can hear it right now, it's unscrewing out of here. And I can screw it back down in there. It's a beautiful thing, man. Especially when we put glue on it, it's a little bit tight, and that's the way I wanted it. Because you know how glue is, and if you guys work with PVC, you know you shove couplers together without glue, they stick. But as soon as you put uh, the glue on it, it's like putting um, ice on ice, okay? And that's the same way this is. Now, I'm not going to glue this because I don't want to ruin a good uh, coupler here, but take this out. Now, what I have is an absolute threaded surface right there now because where this cooled down, it actually made a thread. So, when I put the glue back on this guy here, you put him in there, you screw that thing down, I promise you, it's going to be airtight. It's not going to leak a little bit. It's not going to bubble if you put it under pressure. It's going to be as though you put a regular coupler together. That's what I wanted to show you. That's why I wanted to do this video because you don't want to have this thing put together and have this crap pull apart on you when you're doing something. You want this to be permanent. Now, as far as my pipes go to the uh, actual filters themselves where they attach, no, I don't glue them. And um, because once the filter's together and it's held together, especially with the braces, you don't want to glue all that together because you want to be able to pull it apart and work with it and twist things and shape them as if you need to. So the, these guys here, none of, the, none of the stuff that goes in here, none of the coupler pipes, none of them have glue on them. Be aware of that. Only the couplers going into these pieces here and this guy here has glue on it. Now, you use the same thing when you deal with this heavy plastic. Now, be forewarned, this is much thicker. You're going to take five minutes going around on this guy here and maybe even have to flip it upside down and do it inside. And it's real hard 
So you're going to have to get you a couple extra lids because the first time you do it, you may screw up. So be aware of that. Also, don't get this stuff too hot here either. If you get it too hot, you'll wind up with a loose fit. And if you do, you can take the piece sometimes and pull back on it and the plastic will pull up and, and snug back around it so you can almost fix it. But that is what I wanted you guys to see right there. So on that note, I'm going to put this filter back together and we're going to discuss filter mediums. And I'm going to show you filter mediums. I hope that everything that I've showed you so far, that it's making sense to you. And um, what I'm going to do after, like I said, put these filters together, we're going to look at everything that we have as far as materials go. You know, keep in mind that, you know, there's a, a, a thousand little pieces to this thing, but it's not that complicated at all. You know, you could go with one and a half inch if you want to. I went with one and a quarter because that's what I had. But I'm going to give you the part numbers of everything that I used, okay? I may even put them in the video as I'm speaking because right now I'm recording. So obviously I'm just capturing. I'm not editing. But on that note, I hope this helps you guys. If you don't, you know, if you don't understand what you're looking at, feel free just to shoot me an email. I have no problem with this, you know, helping other people out. Others out there have helped me out. So with that said, I am going to pause this thing. All right, we got one more set of pipes to cover here real quick. And these are going to be the pipes that link the filters together themselves, okay? You're going to make two sets of these. I'm going to give you the nickel tour. See, we're looking at the long piece right here. And we get down to the other side. Now, quick explanation. Do not glue it here. Yes, glue this here. You want to have one elbow here. Glue your little piece of linkage in, but do not glue it here. You want that to be able to free spin. Now, let's go back to the other side. Same thing here. Do not glue it on this end. But yes, glue your two couplers together. Make sure they're not cockeyed. Make sure they are absolutely as flush as you can get them with each other. This guy here, glue it. That's your little piece of coupling. And this is actually the top piece, okay? If you look at it, it makes like the letter J or something. Now, on my pipe, this long piece of pipe, mine just happened to be 49 inches. Okay, now that's the pipe you see. Keep in mind, there's another inch and a quarter hidden in here and on the other side. So 49, 50, 51 and a half inches is the true length that I had to cut that pipe. And you may be slightly off a little bit, and there's a quick and down and dirty way to get it right the first time. I'm going to walk over here, and I'm going to show you. When you make these things up, make the coupler up first, and stick them on there without this pipe here. Do the same thing down at the bottom, at the corresponding pipe that's going to be on it. Make it up, but don't, you know, stick them in there. Now, measure from the top of this lip here, all the way up to the bottom of that lip right there. And remember, you're going to have one and a fourth inches times two that's hidden in these things. So whatever that length winds up being, add two and a half inches to it, and you've got it, and it will be perfect. Now, something else that I meant to say, or maybe I wasn't clear on it, so I'm going to clear something up here. I said that you do not have to disassemble these things when you go to clean them or pull all this stuff off here. All you have to do when you go to clean these filters, go down to the bottom, pull him away, that allows you just to lift this piece off, the whole cap and everything. This way you can dump any stuff out in here and clean them out, uh, wash them with the hose, whatever. Now, the same thing with the bottom. When it's time to dump water, remember, this piece here at the bottom doesn't have any black electrical tape on it. So all you have to do is just literally lean this up against something, pull each one leg out at a time, dump it, put it back up in there. Now, one very last thing, I want to be sure that I'm clear on this too. It's really a tri-filter system with the paper filter. Now I just got my paper filter shoved up here. I don't even have it up here really that good. I just got it stuck in here to so see you guys understand this. This is my last filter in the system. It comes out and it goes into my short filter. And then I couple out and then that goes to the burn tube that uh, where you're going to do your test burns to make sure everything's working or to your generator however you do it. So there you go. If you have any questions feel free to leave something on the blog. I'll be more than glad to answer them for you. Hope this helps you, everybody. All right, what you're looking at here is the last filter that's in the system. I'm going to show it to you. I've got it laid out in an exploded format so you can see how the pieces fit together. And um, we'll cover each piece of this. As you can see, same as the other pipes with the black tape being used as a gasket. Okay. 
Now, something I didn't mention, I do put a little bit of axle grease on the ends of these pipes, all of them, including the tri-filters. You get a double benefit. First of all, it makes the stuff easy to pull apart, but the second thing is, it actually aids in sealing things a little bit too, so just keep that in mind if you try to build this thing. Now, let's start at the top of it. This is the paper filter, and um, the thing I like about this is, it unscrews. We'll set this over here. Oh, if you think you've seen this somewhere before, you probably have. For those of you that remember the movie Up in Smoke with Cheech and Chong, this made its debut in the beginning of the movie when they were riding down the road, or at least it looks like it. Yeah, here we go. Let's cover the cap first. Same as the other ones. You got a slipping thread, slip on this side, thread on the inside. Now, this is how I did this guy right here. There is actually, this is what's in the cap, but there's actually a female counterpart for this, this thing, which is slip and female thread. So, what I did was I took the female part of this and um, I drilled four holes, just like a compass, top, bottom, left, right, or however you want to look at it, north, south, east, west. And um, I did it about a quarter of an inch down. I used an eighth inch bit is what I think that I used. I used coat hangers, took a couple of coat hangers, bent them straight, and then I bent a J shape on the very end of them like a fish hook. I was able to fish it through the hole, take a pair of needle noses, a mash where they would be nice and tight. And then basically what I did, I just made a wire frame, people. It come all the way to the end down here. And I tapered it down, and all I used was a piece of a uh, small fuel line. I think it may have been a quarter inch diameter. It was some small stuff. And I shaped the coat hangers where I could put them down here. And then I used some epoxy or something. I can't remember what it was, but I glued them with something. And um, it was either a epoxy or the hardened epoxy, the putty stuff. Either way, you just need to make sure that nothing's going to fall apart. Now, for this paper filter, I used six paper towels. I just took them and wrapped it around. They didn't even tear, tear them off individually. Just took six and wrapped around it. I used regular old masking tape, or what you'd use for painting. Now, I didn't, when I got to the end of it, taping them up, I made me a tab on the end of it, which is folding the piece of tape on itself. This way you can grab it and peel it off and not have to try to find it with your fingernails. So there you go. That's what I did there. Now, the way this filter works, the gas goes into the inside of it and is forced to the inside to come out. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now we're going to cover the second part of this thing, and that's the tube here. This tube is 17 inches in length. I'm having a problem getting this thing to focus, so I'm not going to try to zoom in on it, but it's exactly 17 inches in length, okay? And um, as a matter of fact, I want you guys to see something. I want to see if I can get this where you can see inside of it. This thing is ran for eight hours. There is a zero tar, no tar drift inside this, period. It's clean. What you're seeing is a shadow. That's why I'm going to flip it over and let you see it on the other side. So this filter actually done its job, or definitely the tri-filter system did, because, yeah, the other filter got a little bit of brown on it, but there was zero drippage from here on to this point here, nothing. And I think that's, this also aids in that nice, clean flame. Now, I'm going to set this back down, and we're going to look at the last piece of it, which I'm not even going to pull this apart. It would be senseless, too. It's just a coupler, and... Um, Basically, I cut a piece of this pipe here, you know, the proper length, whatever this is, double this up, you know, so that it meets from here to here, and um, it's got screen in it, okay? So, I'm going to show you what I did here. Basically, this is what I've done. This is how I set this filter up. I'm just going to put this in here enough to hold it in place, shove them in here so that you guys because this was a cool idea. This was something that I came up with, and to me it was a modification that I think changed things with this filter a little bit. Now, you can see that the filter's right there. All I did was I took wood chips and dumped them in here, just loose packed them till it came all the way up to the top, okay? And um, then, that's why I got screened on this guy here. This guy here went on top of it like this, okay? So, now the gas came in, it had to go through the inside of the filter and pass out through the outer sides of it. Now it had to go through wood chips, and then it came out here. And I'm telling you, the gas is absolutely clean when it come out. So this is the filter, and um, this is how you build it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this thing out and just end this video out with me mentioning a couple things. Uh, here we go. All right. I'm going to make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's here. I'm going to make this very quick, but I'm going to cover this filter so you guys understand what's happening with it. 
Remember, these three filters, the big filters, are in series with each other. This is the first filter. Gas goes in, and this also contains the steel wheel. It comes up, comes out of here, and it's in series with the one that's behind it, the second one. So now that gas comes out, goes down, goes in, comes up to the second filter, which contains wood chips for me on my test. Comes out, the gas is now going back down to the third tube. Goes into the bottom, comes up, and this is the polyester fiber in this one. This is the third tube, comes out, and although I call this a tri-filter system, it's really four, to the last filter, which is the paper filter. Okay, so the filter on the left where the hole is on the bottom of it to the left for the coupler, that's your input. The filter in the back, that's your second filter. The filter to the right in the back is the third filter and the small one is the paper filter. There you go. Hopefully you'll understand this because um, I know it's kind of hard to pull something off of a video but hopefully this will keep you totally clear. I hope that everybody found this video to be helpful and that some of you all out there take this build and try it for yourself and that you see the same good results that I did with it. With that said, everything that I put up on this YouTube channel is always open source. So I'm not out to make any money trying to sell them plans or kits. I just want a good product for myself. And in the meantime, I'm willing to share the data with everybody else out there as others have done for me in the past. So if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave them up on the blog. You can send me an email. Either way, I will reply back to you. With that said, do me a favor and please take a moment and rate the video and let me know what you thought. This is Flash001 USA, and I will see you guys on the next video. Have a good evening.